Hi guys, so we are doing some work today. Let's talk about how you take a mediocre personal statement. It has all the right major moves, but it's missing that kind of wow factor. How do you take mediocre to incredible? And so let's jump right in. Hi, I'm Dr. Josie. This is Write Your Acceptance. I work with students, pre-dental, pre-medical, MS4s, to really elevate your message, their message, so that they are standing out on their own terms and really drafting memorable applications so that acceptances come flowing in. I have students on full rides to Mayo Clinic, UPenn Dental. I've had students that I've worked with as pre-medical, applying to med school, who are now in residency and I apply, worked with them through that too. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's talk about messaging. Let's talk about language and how you can do it as well. Also, before I forget, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you uh, don't miss a video. All right, let's dive in. Here is the original introduction. As the radiant sun emerged over the horizon, the long-awaited day I had anticipated finally arrived. I jogged towards the group of unfamiliar faces, their tall frames casting long shadows across the outfield. My excitement turned to unease as I immersed myself in the circle of my noticeably taller teammates. The coach stood at the center of the circle and, with a puzzled look, swept his gaze over me from head to toe. He searched his clipboard as if looking for validation. Before I could even say my name, he asked, are you here for the younger team? I felt my heart sink and blood rush through my cheeks, blazing with embarrassment. So this is really nicely written. It has image, it has description, it has kind of multi, you know, sensorial, the five senses I can see here, right? I can see kind of images encroaching as the taller teammates, I can see the huddle, but it really kind of delays the play. At the end of the day, you wanna make sure that your personal statement is your journey to medicine, right? So you're not really kind of teasing, you're not spending an entire paragraph of beautiful language, but that doesn't move the needle for you. So you wanna make sure that every section, even your attention grabber, is really laying the foundation for your why medicine. So let's look at paragraph two so we can kind of chunk it out and look at the different sections. So right after that, this is what the student had. The humiliation I felt that day about my short stature made it unforgettable. As a result, my parents took me to see Dr. Bao, an endocrinologist who diagnosed me with a growth hormone deficiency. In order to grow at a normal rate, Dr. Bao explained that I would need to start taking daily injections of growth hormone. At nine years old, this was my first encounter with the almost magical properties of medicine with a simultaneous realization that I would need to inject myself daily. I became terrified and began to cry. Seeing my fear, Dr. Bao kindly reassured me that he would be with me every step of the way until I grew comfortable injecting myself. He also shared stories of other children who had positive outcomes from similar treatments, which started to provide me with some relief. Over time, Dr. Bao's warmth, as well as a feeling of hope and comfort he provided, gave me the courage to undergo my treatment and made him one of my role models. Through this encounter, I knew I wanted to become a physician to be the same source of compassion of others during their most vulnerable moments. So here we are, the actual spark moment of the student's why medicine. And like I said, this is, I'm being harsh when I say mediocre in the sense of this personal statement first draft has all the main elements, right? But I feel like it is not as efficient with its time. And so then it can't go as deep as it can or it did after we kind of worked on it. So we have the spark moment. We have a beautiful kind of like, you know, interaction with medicine. It is passive in the sense of this happened to the student, but we will then shift into kind of more active experiences with patients later on. One kind of yellow flag. I'm not going to say red. One kind of yellow flag that I don't love is casting medicine as magic, as magical. You'd be surprised how I see, I mean, I see this every cycle. And so I don't love it just because it outsources the kind of work and dedication and just kind of like tedious nature of being excellent at your craft, right? And being a student of medicine and seeing kind of how medicine works and being curious intellectually about how medicine works. The student and I kind of went back and forth about it. They still kind of used it, which is okay. At the end of the day, you know what's best for you and your journey, your story. But it is kind of something that I'm like, eh, do I use it? No, do I not use it? Kind of conversation that I spur with the student. So after working with the student for a couple of drafts, those two paragraphs became one paragraph. And this is the final cut of that paragraph one. At nine years old and four feet, three inches short, I learned the painful distinction between being small in height and feeling small. Feeling small gnaws at your self-esteem, diminishing your confidence and depriving you of the courage to be your true self. 
The constant weight of insecurity pressed down on my shoulders, causing me to slouch in my seat to avoid participating in the classroom or even voicing my opinions without fear of being judged. As a result, my parents took me to see Dr. Bao, an endocrinologist who diagnosed me with a growth hormone deficiency. My first encounter with the almost magical properties of medicine thrilled and simultaneously terrified me. When I learned that I would need to inject myself daily, I began crying and Dr. Bao abruptly changed his tact with me. Moving away from the clinical dimensions of my care, he reassured me, showing me the humanism within medicine and sparking my commitment to serve the field as a physician one day. Along with his ease and compassion, Dr. Bao shared stories of other children who had positive outcomes from similar treatments, empowering me to find the courage to undergo the treatment. I no longer felt alone or even small within my circumstances, and that is precisely what I aspire to offer patients. So notice the beginning changed right away. There is, although it was beautiful language, there's no description of the sun, right? Like the kind of horizon. There's no description of how I finally came to the day that would change my life but the sentence doesn't say anything about how it changed your life. Like it's teasing the reader. You're kind of swallowing characters for kind of like Vista landscape description that's not moving the needle of your why medicine. I also love when there's a theme that can crop up. And I feel like after the student and I went back and forth a couple of times, we really talked about kind of the emotional toll that kind of his stature and his height was kind of, you know, wreaking havoc on his teen confidence. And so then there we started a kind of physical, but also a symbolic theme of kind of being small and feeling small. And so how can we carry that over to his why medicine? And, and I think that it's, it's an idea and a theme that threads nicely throughout and makes the personal statement really kind of stand out. And so then the ending of the introduction really kind of anchors the personal statement as personal statement, right? It gives kind of a quote unquote thesis statement. And I love the line, it says, I began crying and Dr. Bao abruptly changed his tact with me. Moving away from the clinical dimensions of my care, he reassured me, showing me the humanism within medicine and sparking my commitment to serve the field as a physician one day. So we are really seeing what of Dr. Bao's kind of approaches really landed with the student and how they want to kind of emulate that. And so we've, we've set the stage with the theme, with imagery, and with a spark moment in one paragraph versus two. All right, so here is the middle of the older essay. As a result of my interactions with Dr. Bao, I developed an interest in medicine, which led me to become a patient care assistant. One day, as I was zipping up my lunchbox, a nurse urgently requested my assistance in bathing a patient. Quickly, I made my way around the maze of colleagues to Mia's room, an elderly woman battling the debilitating pain of diabetic neuropathy. The tight grip on her bed sheets and clenching of her teeth displayed the pain she had been enduring. As the nurse bathed her, I approached Mia and gently took her hand in mine. Her eyes opened slowly and I saw a flicker of relief in them. I maintained a firm grip on her hand, providing reassurance through my touch. After the bath, Mia gave me a warm smile and this small moment reminded me of my inspiration to pursue medicine. I remembered experiencing the hopelessness of being in a vulnerable position and the power of a comforting presence. As I hoped to provide hope and relief to patients to the greatest extent possible, it became clear to me that I must become a physician in order to diagnose, provide a treatment, and assist in their healing. By becoming a physician who prioritizes compassionate care, I aspire to empower patients, providing them comfort and hope in the face of despair. So the topic sentence is good, okay, but because we already had that anchoring top, like thesis statement about humanism and medicine, the last kind of line of the intro, we don't really need that here. So now we don't need this kind of like, that influenced me here. And then the zipping the lunchbox and zigzagging through the maze, we don't really need that. We don't need to see that in the kind of, you know, efficiency of telling a story. And even the patient story, the patient story is okay. It's serviceable, but after brainstorming with a student and really kind of learning all of the kind of archived experiences that the student had with patients, we moved this to the most meaningful in the activity section. And then we brought in a different pa uh, patient experience. And so this is what the paragraph came out to be. Feeling small in healthcare can be tied to internal struggles and external circumstances that can both feel out of your control. As a patient care assistant, I've connected with patients who have difficulty securing transportation to the hospital or who skip preventative tests because they fear deportation. When who you are feels in jeopardy with the medical infrastructure, it creates vulnerability and powerlessness. Caring for Max, a 42 year old patient who was hospitalized under the Baker Act, allowed me to witness this tension. Upon entering the room, a somber atmosphere hung heavy. I could hear the tremor in Max's voice, revealing the depth of his emotional turmoil. 
Max bravely opened up, expressing his feelings of loneliness and frustration that accompanied his struggles with mental health and the isolation of the Baker Act. He also shared his reluctance to participate in treatment as he doubted that anything could improve his current situation. With the goal of bringing the same hope and comfort that Dr. Bao brought me, I shared stories of other patients who had experienced positive transformations while under the Baker Act, emphasizing the potential for recovery. I explained how our team would be alongside him every step of the way and how the treatment could help him overcome his struggles. Sitting next to him on the wrinkled hospital bed sheets, I hoped Max no longer felt so alone. Once he embraced his treatment, I felt the hovering sense of powerlessness lift as he invested in his own potential and wellness, shifting from despair to hope. As a future physician, I aspire to approach every encounter with patients as an opportunity for this shift in mindset so that medicine becomes a vehicle for physical and emotional healing. While my work as a patient care assistant offered me insight into the language of patient empowerment I aspire to lean on, hospice care taught me that healing does not always mean a cure. However, in the darkest of times, when the flicker of life is about to be extinguished, medicine can offer healing for that very moment. Okay, so I gave you the new paragraph with Max, right? And then I gave you the topic sentence of the next section so that you can see how a transition does both move from the content from Max and the Baker Act and that experience to hospice care, right? And so it not only says, I went from this experience to that experience, but it also kind of elevates the moment because it gives, okay, what of medicines that I learn from shifting in experiences in this different medical context? And so that's what makes an okay topic sentence into an excellent topic sentence because it really gives that perspective versus just a GPS kind of in the sense of like from here, I then I went to here. Give what it does for you, how it impacted your wine medicine, what did it offer you? And that then gestures to what the rest of that paragraph will be on. Another thing that I want to kind of mention is that this body paragraph that we just talked about with Max and as patient care assistant, we hear macro moments, right? He learns about patients who have difficulty with, tra uh, with transportation, who skip preventive uh, tests because of fear of deportation. So we have a sense of um, the student is kind of dialed into the public health needs of his community, of the most vulnerable. And so then the paragraph is not just about Max, but it really shows a macro perspective as to how the student has really taken full advantage of every learning opportunity in this moment, in this job. Are you kind of not loving your personal statement and want to really elevate the quality and you know depth of the content comment below i'd love to start chatting with you so this essay has one more patient experience in hospice which i'm not going to get into just kind of for brevity but you got the topic sent the transitional topic sentence and it really kind of continued the theme of patient empowerment of going beyond your limitations of sometimes kind of feeling a certain way and how external circumstances can kind of, you know, exacerbate those feelings of inequality. And so it kind of threads into the whole being small and feeling small type uh, thread theme that we started in the introduction. So I'm gonna, I wanna do the before and after with the conclusion because it's subtle differences, but differences that are valuable nonetheless. All right, here we go. So the old conclusion. By building rapport, I intend to cultivate a safe space for patients, enabling me to better understand their perspectives and needs. Ultimately, I hope this approach will allow me to diagnose, treat, and improve the lives of patients to the best of my ability. Furthermore, I will use my Latino heritage in combination with my unique perspectives to help reduce healthcare disparities and cultivate a community that can address the needs of all people. I hope to be a physician who can do more with, for patients than just prescribe a solution, but rather bring them light during the, their darkest moments. Perfectly adequate conclusion. It wraps it up. It drops in the Latino heritage, but it really doesn't do much with that. And I feel like the imagery of the light and darkness, the way the student is using it feels overused. It feels like it wants to be more deep than it is versus the way that we kind of previously used it with hospice about the immediacy of medicine and bringing comfort in the now too. So it deploys that imagery differently. Here is the new conclusion. Representation is important in medicine, but also our willingness to build community with patients with whatever connections we have available to us. I commit to being a physician who tirelessly seeks this connection. Ultimately, the transformation I witnessed in patients from hopelessness to optimism continues to fuel my motivation to become a physician. The connection I built with Emilio and Max's courage to undergo treatment have instilled in me an unwavering determination to make my aspirations a reality. 
I hope to be given the opportunity of becoming a practicing physician who is a patient advocate so no one feels small in my care. All right. So this conclusion has a little bit of everything. It's cerebral and intellectual in the sense that it gives their two cents, the students two cents about representation and about kind of diversity without kind of going too long winded on it and really talking about how it's more important to be inclusive, more important to find those commonalities and kind of bridge and find connection there, nurture connection there. Then it goes into the two patient experiences that they focus on and really kind of why they draw strength and encouragement for their kind of calling to medicine. And the original conclusion, like I said, it was okay. It was serviceable, but this really kind of gives a level of dimension to the many different kind of facets of the student's values that I think is more memorable than the first iteration of the draft. I hope you found this video helpful. Give us a like if you are looking to, you know, chat about how I work with students, definitely get on my calendar and we can talk about how we could potentially work together if we're a good fit. And I will see you guys soon. Thanks so much. Bye.